In this question, we're going to be looking at electrochemical cells under non-standard conditions. So standard conditions has all concentrations are one molar. Now, if we have a situation where our concentrations are not one molar, for example, here, we can see we've got a 0.023 molar solution of nickel nitrate, and we've got a 0.316 molar solution of cobalt nitrate. So these are non-standard conditions because the concentrations are not equal to one. In these questions, we're going to be thinking about Q and K and comparing them to figure out what the cell potential would be for our non-standard cell. To help us do that, I'm going to draw a number line to help us visualize what's going on. So here's our number line. There are several important things we can put on there. The first one is we can mark one on our number line. I'm going to put that in the middle here. So one is important because under standard conditions, our Q value would be equal to one. The reason why is that Q has an expression made up of concentrations of things in our reaction. And if all the concentrations are one, that means everything in our Q expression is one. So Q is just gonna be one as well. So under standard conditions, Q is one. So when Q is one, we have standard conditions. That means our cell potential is the standard cell potential, which in this question is 0 0.0300 volts, for example. So when we have Q equal to one, our cell potential is equal to our standard cell potential. Okay, now in this question, K is bigger than one. We can see we've got K here marked as 10.3. So for this question, I'm gonna put K somewhere higher up the number line. I'm going to mark it here, showing that K is bigger than 1. So let's think about the example where Q is equal to K. So we know when Q is equal to K, that means neither the forwards or backwards reaction is favoured. It means we're in equilibrium. In that case, our cell potential would be 0 because neither the forwards nor the backwards reaction are favoured and nothing's going to change. So if Q is equal to K, then our cell potential is going to be equal to zero. What about if Q is somewhere in between? What about if Q is somewhere between one and K on the number line? So in other words, Q is greater than one, but less than K. In that case, our cell potential has got to be somewhere between zero and the standard cell potential. And you can see as we get further away from when Q is equal to K, our E, our cell potential is increasing. That makes sense because having Q less than K means our forwards reaction is favored. If Q is way smaller than K, our forwards reaction is really gonna be favored. And that's shown by a high cell potential. What about this section down here? This would be when Q is less than one. Well, when Q's less than one, we're getting even further away from K, which means our cell potential has got to be increasing. Since when Q is equal to one, our cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential. As we get less than one, our cell potential is going to be greater than the standard cell potential. And the smaller and smaller that Q gets, the bigger and bigger the cell potential is going to be. The last section to look at would be over here. This would be when our Q is bigger than our K value. So this is when Q is greater than K. Now we know when Q is greater than K, the backwards reaction is favored. The forwards reaction is not favored and it's not spontaneous when Q is greater than K. And if the backwards reaction is favored and the forwards reaction is not favored, that means our cell potential must be negative. So our cell potential is going to be less than zero when Q is greater than K. So there's all our possible scenarios on our number line. 
Now let's look at the specific question that we have here. This reaction is involving nickel and cobalt in an electrochemical cell at 25 degrees C under non-standard conditions. So that's what I pointed out here. Our concentrations are not one. We're given the chemical equation for this reaction. We're also given E0, the standard cell potential is 0 0.03 volts. K is 10.3 and Q is 13.6. So our first step is comparing the reaction quotient Q with the equilibrium constant K at the moment shown in the diagram. The moment shown in the diagram is what this Q refers to. Remember Q is like a snapshot of what's going on. So at that moment, Q is 13.6, K is 10.3. So Q is greater than K at this moment. So which direction will the reaction proceed? If Q is greater than K, we know the backwards reaction is favored. We're also asked, how does the reaction quotient Q compare with one at the moment shown in the diagram? Well, it's 13.6, which is greater than one. So we have a situation here where Q is greater than K and it's greater than one. So looking at our number line down here, this was our section where Q is greater than K. And we said at that time, the cell potential will be less than zero because the backwards reaction is favored. So how does the instantaneous cell potential compare with the standard cell potential? Well, it's going to be less than zero at this point. So for these questions, all you need to do is compare Q with K and with one and figure out where it sits on this number line. And then you can use that to figure out what our cell potential will be. Let's do one more question of this type. In this question, we have a reaction involving copper and rhenium in an electrochemical cell at 25 degrees C under non-standard conditions. That's why we have a 3.61 molar concentration of the copper nitrate and a 1.57 molar concentration of the rhenium nitrate. Those concentrations are not one, so we're not under standard conditions. Here's our chemical equation for our reaction. We've been given our E0 cell, the standard cell potential, at 0.04 volts. K, the equilibrium constant, as 1.17 times 10 to the power of 4. And Q, the reaction quotient, as 0.436. So we're going to be comparing Q and K. So firstly, which is bigger, Q or K? Well, K is times 10 to the power of 4, and Q is 0.436. So Q is a lot smaller than K. Q is less than K. If Q is less than K, that means our reaction will proceed in the forwards direction. Next, we're asked, how does the reaction quotient compare with 1? Well, Q is 0 0.436, which is less than 1. So Q is less than 1. So to figure out what's happening, let's look at our number line. We have Q 0 0.436. So Q is less than K, and it's also less than 1. So Q is in this section of our number line here, where Q is less than 1. At that point, our cell potential is greater than our standard cell potential because we're even further away from K. And so the reaction needs to favor the forwards direction even more to get us there, to get us to where Q eventually equals K. So our instantaneous cell potential is going to be greater than our standard cell potential at this point. So again, all you need to do in these questions is compare Q and K and compare Q with one, and then use your number line to figure out what our standard cell potential will be.